And now for another episode of Dead Men Hike No Trails, my book written from my uh, experience hiking the 2,000 mile long Appalachian Trail, influenced in uh, no small part by our friend here, Dr. Hunter S. Thompson. Here we go. Cue the music, maestro. As I recall, we were somewhere around Tilton, on the edge of, well, Tilton, in central New Hampshire's Lakes region, when the drugs began to take hold. I remember asking Justin what was in the MSR hydration bladder he'd gone to an outfitter and bought just to make me feel at home while drinking. He had suddenly taken on an unearthly airplane toilet chemical blue glow. I flipped down the passenger side mirror to get a look at his girlfriend, Jess, in the back seat, and sure enough, the same glow. When my cousin turned to respond to me, his eyes had gone alien black, and he grinned a wide grin with multi-layered shark-like teeth. Oh Jesus, I recalled thinking, this is going to be one hell of a ride. Justin had spent a small fortune on fireworks, his mother, my aunt, Mary, a small fortune on booze. Apparently, I had specially requested top-shelf tequila, fresh lemons and limes, and Gramonier instead of standard, standard triple sec. Justin squeezed lemons and I whipped up some five-star margaritas, and with drinks in one hand and Roman candles in the other, Justin, Jess, Mary, her husband, Chris, myself, and Justin's amigo Dennis all ran screaming around their farm in the dark, blasting one another with fireballs. Mind you, this came directly on the heels of a long soak in the redwood hot tub in the barn and was performed in the drizzling rain, so there was no danger of immolation involved. Everyone wore eye protection. Those without prescription glasses wore welding goggles or welding hats with protective face shields scrounged from Chris's metal shop. Afterwards, and before a scrumptious prime rib on the grilled dinner prepared by Mary, we took several turns, running through the rows of corn. Well, those in the driveway unloaded several, several gross of bottle rockets into the cornfield. It was good, clean American fun, and everyone treated themselves to a double dose of Prozac to celebrate our freedom to wage war on anyone we want all over the globe. Gosh, it felt good to be an American that night. Later, we drove over to Justin's friend Sean's house on the lake and got completely twisted. All I remember through the haze of Jack Daniels is standing at the helm of Sean's parents' speedboat, ripping across Lake Winnipesaukee at Mach 5, and Justin screaming at me over the wind, something about larceny, and we're dead! Upon which he returned to his fit of giggles, nailed as he was to the back of the boat by the tremendous G-forces. I'm not dead, I howled. I'm more alive than ever. I had no idea what he was talking about. I remember we did a lot of tooling around in my Aunt Mary's new bumblebee yellow and black jeep. Mary's the greatest, truly the antithesis of all my maternal aunts, although, to the credit of the latter, I never spent a lot of time with my mom's much older sisters, but I'm pretty sure that's a good thing. Mary reads like a fiend and is no doubt responsible for Justin being the extremely literate news aficionado that he is. Perhaps because she reads, Mary, more than anyone in my family, appreciates what I do and how hard I've struggled to keep at it when the world wanted me to get a job. A job. Can you imagine it? Atrocious. An abomination. Anyway, Aunt Mary and Cousin Justin delivered the goods. All inheritors of depressive genes, we share a love of self-medication via ye old cocktail. We put a good dent in New Hampshire's state liquor store that week, let me tell you. 
Every morning, Mary whipped up a batch of her famous bloody namesake to kill the irksome ache of last night and lay the groundwork for another day of liquid summer fun. Although Justin's lovely, red-headed, sharp-witted, and barely out of her teens girlfriend, Jess, never hooked me up with one of her haughty young friends as I had begged her, we did manage to squeeze a lot of fun into that 4th of July week, including water skiing, wave hopping with terrace jet skis, pole vaulting over livestock, rope swinging and jumping off the train trestle into the river, and of course, 18 holes of golf with New Hampshire native Adam Sandler in town to visit his folks. Jenna What's-Her-Face from the first episode of Survivor is from Justin's hometown of Franklin. She must have been home to visit her parents, too, because we ran into her at this seafood, seafood joint on the lake with a dock and a boat fueling area out back where my grandfather used to take me to fuel up the boat. Justin's brother's best friend's cousin's sister went to high school with Jenna's survivor, and I was apparently sufficiently intoxicated that night to draw a six degrees of separation connection out of all that, bringing it down to one degree as I sidled up to, next to her at the bar. I don't remember saying anything to her, kind of like you don't remember the moments leading up to a major car crash you were in, but according to Jess, who smelled trouble and followed me chaperone-like from our booth to the bar, I laid that line on her from the comedy film Joe Dirt, you know, the one at the girl with the girl at the fair. If I told you you had a nice body, would you hold it against me? It's that whole useless celebrity thing I was talking about, I guess. I didn't really want her. I guess I just wanted to piss her off. Apparently I succeeded. The next morning Aunt Mary served up not only a bloody, but an ice pack for my right eye. That Jenna What's-Her-Face apparently has a mean left hook. End of story for tonight. <laughs> that was a funny one. Well, good. I'm glad I, you approved. I know you wanted me to read it, and you know, I did, even though you're impatient, you bastard. And if you put that up on YouTube, everyone will be like, Whoa, who, who, where, where, why, why? Let's put it up. Let's put it up right now. And somehow it'll get back to Jenna What's Her Face, I'm sure, because Kim will Kim knows what? her. It's still recording? Oh my god, it's still recording. Jesus. Oh my Jesus Christ. I don't know.